Welcome back to another edition of the Rural Perspective. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now we're talking today about ways that we can better support tourism and economic development in our gold country region, specifically in the communities of Spences Ridge, Ashcroft, Cash Creek and Clinton. And today we are joined with a uh, entrepreneur, Jordan Johnston of Razzle Marketing. We also have Chris Wilson of KTW Digital joining us on the panel discussion and our very own Brandy, oh, Brandy Cooper. I always forget the, the, the other last name. I'm so sorry. Um, from Gold Country Region, joining us, uh, the expert of the Gold Country Region, <laughs> Brandy. Thank you so much for joining us. How do you say your second last name? No problem, Dana. It's Chardon. Chardon. It's so simple. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. So. Um, this the context behind this conversation is uh, I was chatting with Chris Wilson just regarding our region and he was explaining that a team of uh, I believe eight basketball teams came into our community and they were looking for places to go and as we know people that live out here there are so many wonderful uh, restaurants and wonderful places for people to go and see um, so how can we better inform uh, the rest of the world outside of us what's available and what's here for our community. So I'll start with Brandy. Uh, what, are, what are some ideas or ways that you can share or we can share on better supporting um, tourism and economic development in our region? Really exciting to hear about basketball tournaments and, and tournaments happening in our region. One of the um, topics that I actually just spoke about was uh, community organization based tourism. You know, once you put your child into a group activity, uh, you become an automatic tourist because you're getting sent more, more than 40 kilometers to go and participate in a match or a game. And uh, you're traveling to another town. You're uh, probably going to need some food. You might have a little bit of break in between your games. So you're going to want to find those things to do. Uh, one of the things that Gold Country has just um, been working on is our very own app. You can download it in the Google Play Store or in the App Store. And on our app, you can find businesses and activities. And we have a really awesome events calendar on the Gold Country website. So if you're looking for something to do, uh, we have a, a lovely lady here that works really hard on keeping our events calendar up to date. Uh, so take a moment and download download that app or visit our website and see what's happening on the days that you're coming in. Uh, living rurally means that we have to be open and flexible. So if you're a sports organization coming into our small communities, I would highly encourage um, perhaps reaching out to the economic development officer, reaching mm -hmm. out uh, mm -hmm. to even us so we can maybe coordinate uh, perhaps longer hours for restaurants. Um, yeah. Maybe there's going to be some, we can reach out to our resources uh, like the hub and whatnot and perhaps open up some activities to like, house some, house some uh, unexpected visitors. And, uh, you know, yeah. once you get that, once we get that, that, uh, uh, I guess that would be that line of communication uh, mm -hmm. established, then we can hopefully not have uh, a bunch of kids, um, you know, looking for things to do. To, to do. All right. So, Chris, um, you are from Kamloops and you you were the one, one of the parents that came into our community. Um, what what, didn't you, what was your, your sort of first opinion on coming into uh, the community out here in uh, Cash Creek in Ashcroft? Well, overall, uh, thank you, Dana, for having me uh, on here as well. I, uh, I grew up in a small community. Uh, I grew up in a small community, Kenora, Ontario, which is, uh, you know, kind of one of those smaller towns where you, you know a lot of people. It's, it's a huge tourist town. Uh, so I kind of a sense of being at home. I really enjoy it. Typically, you can go into the coffee shop and find out where anyone is, what's going on, and et cetera, et cetera, uh, which is you know, kind of old school, I guess, before the internet. I'm dating myself a little bit, but uh, 
coming into the community, it's it was great, right? We're excited. We're we're there for an event. We're there to have some fun. Um, it's it's difficult because, and like I'm a certain person. I'm I'm also a father, uh, and I come with some of the challenges that dads have. You know, as much as trying to cover both sides. Uh, you know, sometimes when moms are, are covering the events, they're a little more planned ahead. They've done some research. They've looked into things. They know where things are. Uh, and this event was just all dad's driving. So, you know, we'd completed some, uh, games and we had a gap in between because sometimes you don't know what your schedule is going to be. It's, it adjusts based on whether you're winning or losing games. And, uh, we're like, okay, well, let's go get some stuff to eat. You know, we've heard some good things about this restaurant and everyone kind of jumped in and was like, oh, wait, it's closed. Um, and then there was kind of a parade driving around, just kind of looking for, um, uh, a restaurant or somewhere, uh, that we could, uh, kind of get all the kids together. So, I mean, we ended up uh going to cash creek and and finding uh something that was open there but you know from from a standpoint where although there are all multiple smaller communities we were in ashcroft for an event in ashcroft uh and it, it would have been nice you know because i'm kind of the marketing support local mindset that if we can bring money into that community it reflects great on the event organizer and the school that's bringing these people into the community so uh, not everyone thinks like that, but it's it uh, yeah definitely was looking to try and uh, spend some money uh, yeah. in town. So. Yeah. Well, it, Jordan, you're you're from the perspective of a business owner. Um, what are your thoughts on how and and also you're you're in the job of social media and promoting. Um, what is your what are your thoughts about how um, you know Clinton could improve? Um, tourism and supporting uh tourists coming into it, its community because you guys get a lot too oh yeah um yeah and so thank you also for having me here um and yeah so i do online marketing and i have approached a lot of the small businesses in town there is a huge gap and need for not only like just getting online but understanding how to do it and how to do it right because well especially after and during the pandemic it sped up the process and how we do marketing now people are craving connection they're craving mm -hmm. authentic they want to support businesses and brands who share the same values of them as we move into like um you know brands who are less eco-friendly and people who are very green and into supporting businesses that do that <clears throat> And the best way to connect yourself, your business with those people is being online and creating content and sharing um, who you are as a business with all those people and reaching beyond just locals. And so a lot of business owners kind of see the need for it and want it. But also our internet is not very good out here. <laughs> Like, mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> so, that's so that very true. Is a, <laughs> that in itself is, yeah. is another problem for kind of bringing in tourism and attracting tourists. It's hard to show off who we are and that we're here, getting mm -hmm. them. We want them to see ahead of time and plan their route to stop in at these places because, well, my experience, like I've lived in the city and I've lived in small towns and the, the vibes are just different and smaller communities are more connected and uh, a business is small businesses because they have the capacity and um, not as much of volume as city. So they, they're able to care more and put more into what they're delivering. So if, if we were able to show that off more, uh, I think it would really help these small businesses get that increased traffic that we're especially Ashcroft being off the highway, you got to mm -hmm. show people why they want to take that five minute yeah. detour into the cute little Ashcroft town. Yeah, absolutely. So for everybody, um, and this is just, you know, we can have a conversation here. Um, what are some ideas, uh, any one of you uh, on the panel today, what are some of the I ideas that you can come up with on uh, ways that we can help people in our communities better support uh, local tourism and economic development? Because there is a lot of opportunities and a lot of great places out here. I think Jordan, uh, more so on what she was saying, 
connect, right? That's what social media is about. Uh, and it just gives us these tools uh, that we can communicate so clearly. You know, it, it can be a basic what's going on page uh, and encouraging people to communicate that to that. Mm -hmm. uh, businesses, uh, from a business standpoint, claim your Google listing and adjust it. Okay. It's very small, it's very simple. Uh, it's free, so don't. If someone's calling you saying, "I just need your credit card and we'll help you," that don't do that. Uh, you can just Google your own business, click on own this business, and follow the process. And if you're the owner and you're in your business, it's very simple to take control of it. And the simple mm -hmm. thing in doing that is when I say, "Hey, I want someone to eat near me," because uh, I'll always, unless there's no sell, I've got gigs and gigs of fast data that's going to come to my phone. I want to know where I can eat near me. I want to know what's going on near me. And it's going to depend on that information. If you're updating your Google listing, there's nothing worse than saying, yeah, this restaurant's open, than pulling up and seeing a sign in the thing saying, hey, we're under renovations. So, so you're you're negatively affecting your brand. So it's one thing if you're closed. It's, you know, that's, I get it. You said you're closed, you're closed. You know, I would love to eat there, but I can't. Uh, it's another to almost misrepresent the business. And no one means to. It's not done maliciously, but sometimes the lack of diligence in communicating where you are as a business online uh, can can have a negative effect. So, absolutely, that's my input. <laughs> um, Brandy, Jordan, I, yeah, I I think like building on the connection. Mm -hmm. So many of our businesses, <coughs> excuse me, um, can more or less piggyback off of each other, like the restaurants putting in menus in all the hotels, taking that step of connecting with your fellow business owners in all the communities because Cash Creek, Ashcroft and Clinton are all so close and we could be bringing each other different business uh, with that connection. If business owners, you know, stepped up and made the effort to figure out how we can all together start promoting each other because that's like sharing audiences online, resharing other businesses content is one way of expanding each other's audiences because you're sharing the audiences so same as just being brick and mortar and in person mm -hmm. have that connection and share each other's business with each other build each other up or we're, we're small businesses we're community let's take that and use that to our advantage it's creating a digital mall right totally. that connection yeah. where you can feed off other people's successes if they're there for one business if they're all yeah. communicating and connected uh, you're yes. definitely able to to utilize or grow your business based on someone else's efforts and success. I definitely sure. see our communities really communicating on on Facebook mostly. I don't think many of our communities are really anywhere else. I'm, I'm, I could be wrong. Um, would you encourage them to start using other other platforms on social media? Well, I think uh, one of the things that has happened since the pandemic is there was a big push to keep up business as usual. So we saw a lot mm -hmm. of our brick and mortar businesses going online. And what happened, especially in small communities, is um, you get you get your website up online, but you are now into the internet of things where there is millions and millions and millions of small businesses. So going back to what Chris said, it's very simple. Yes, claim your business. Another, another great uh, tool out there is TripAdvisor. Um, make sure your listing is on TripAdvisor as well too. And, um, you know, the more you can point people uh, to your online presence and keep it updated, the more you're going to be able to send your uh, current messaging out. So definitely staying current is uh, very important too. Um, oh, right. Um, I did see, I think pretty sure I'm, Clinton was on Instagram or, and or Gold Country. I know I've seen people sharing mm -hmm. and uh, tagging Clinton and Gold Country and Instagram. So, and with younger generations, like the Gen Z coming up into adulthood, they're more on those other platforms. So Facebook is good because our communities are older. Mm -hmm. However, we want to start attracting more families. We want to yeah. start showing off what we offer families, yes. which I mean, it's pretty limited at the moment, but once we start <laughs> bringing more people around, yeah. that gives us more potential. Mm -hmm. Like Clinton, they've got started trying to build the 
basketball nets and uh, we have the dog park and, um, you know, they're starting to kind yeah. of put a little bit more community yeah. family events in and the more we can bring families, the more that will Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I first moved here, I just had me and my dog and I would always travel into Clinton. One, you have a really great beach and lake and two, great restaurants. And then three, the dog park that having a dog park, being able to keep your dog contained and safe and running is amazing. So Clinton has lots of great opportunities and they seem to be very friendly. I've gone out there for many different markets to just go shopping. I got this ring actually at one of the shops. (laughs) Um, So things like that, like there, there are so many things and you're right. We do want to encourage um, younger people coming into our communities. We, one thing I do hear though, it's sort of the problematic sort of there's, we want to encourage people to move here, but we need to develop jobs. We need to have housing. You know, it, it does seem a little overwhelming. Like, where do we start? Where do we Chicken start? The egg. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, as much as it's like, yeah, let's move it. But where, where, how are we going to create jobs? You know, for me being a young entrepreneur, I guess I'm not young, actually. <laughs> for me being an entrepreneur, um, there that's one of my concerns is like if i build this bigger where are the people going to live and live in adequate housing so those are one of my concerns so how how would you guys what what where would you start if you had all the money in the world and could direct us where to start what would you do first <laughs> housing housing yeah i agree 100 well, percent. i'm gonna go where, a different Jordan? direction Jordan, where do you work? Jordan, where do you work? Yeah, Jordan. I I own my own business, Razzle Marketing. I would I would start with community programs. But uh, where are you right now? Oh, I'm right now in a library. (laughs) You're in Alberta. In in Alberta? Yeah. Yes. So so what you're saying is you can do your job from anywhere. Yes. So would you rather spend a ton of money and live in a major city center or would you rather be in a beautiful little community with a lower cost and a great lifestyle? Because that's where the world is going. There's a whole generation of people that have shifted into being able to work at home. And as such, yeah. the this having to go to work and come back isn't important anymore. Now it's a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think, well, it, it could be, I didn't let you speak, so I'm gonna let you go. But I think the, the housing, if you have that there and there's a value and there is that lifestyle that you can sell, people can work from home now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fully believe yeah. that. Um, I just, uh, I would start with, um, well, I mean, I, with the housing. Yeah, that, that is a great place to start. But also bringing community programs a little yeah. more, a little more like uh, things for the adults to do, things for the yeah. kids to do, yeah. get them, get everybody out of their houses and like socializing and bringing back the community that we've been missing the last few years and stuff. And well, I mean, not missing. Cause I mean, we still, I saw <clears throat> Clinton and all the other smaller communities keep community, like mm-hmm. uh, drive by birthdays, uh, par- like a parade of birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's right. That's right. Grocery shopping for other people and stuff. But it, it you know, yeah. I think having some more, programs in place would be great. I have I would agree with Jordan too. I have two boys and keeping two very active boys to keeping them um, busy and and doing things. There's not a lot of places we travel into Kamloops a lot. And even myself, I sometimes struggle with, you know, the city has so much to offer for me. But uh, again, I love my lifestyle. I like that I have the freedom to travel and work and, and call, call the shots for my life, where if I were to move to a city, you know, I feel like that lifestyle would be limited to nine to five again. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that's true. I, re- I, I think that we do need a lot of programs, but I also see, um, as we've mentioned, our community is more senior. We want to attract younger people, but I've noticed that a lot of the programs are usually run by seniors. And I would imagine that we need more uh, people stepping up to start and help grow these programs. I completely agree. Which I would also 
I think that also comes from a lack of communication and um, mm-hmm. these programs not knowing how to ask for help or how to approach people or having like a hub where they can get this information out to these yeah. to the younger people. Because like I said, a lot yes. of the older generation has that harder time getting online just because they yeah. they haven't been immersed in it the same way as the younger generations growing into it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's true. I, I, I think about that too. You know, we have uh, our intern, Valerie, she's, she's young. Um, I always forget that, like, I guess there are that younger generation that we should and could reach out to, but not being young is like, how do you, and where do you go to, to connect with those, those youth about community? Is it Clinton yeah. that has the, the, like the dance hall or the community hall? Yeah. We all have community Clinton? halls. Okay, well, I just, my, uh, Elaine Kisby, who is uh, kind of a family member, uh, she grew up in Clinton Dunbar area, and she was like, oh, we're going here, and like, they're, they're having this for New Year's, or they're doing this, yeah. uh, and that's, to me, where a lot of that community connects, right? It's it's finding, so if there's something where you're yeah. having that event, because really, the infrastructure's in place already, so there's no real cost. It takes time and energy for someone to uh, organize and connect, but you're bringing your community together uh and the more you can connect them with what you have because really increasing any kind of infrastructure is going to take more taxes which means more people which like so you need the money to do it so really it's maximizing what you have uh through effective Uh. communicating connecting the community uh and really you know that joy when you enjoy something uh and you're like yeah i'm in clinton and it's great Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. those visits to kamloops that you know not like oh it's so beautiful here it sucks there you know, if you're coming into another city center and you're happy about what you're doing uh, and you're just like, yeah, it's great. I'm coming in to do this, but it's really awesome there. That's it's it has a ripple effect of people talking about a fun little community that has that. And I think you can draw more people in just with, you know, that ripple of starting with what you have, reconnecting you. And I don't know, is there a monthly dance? You know, I think that that's an awesome idea, Chris. And one of the things that when I think about strong communities, I think about what are the kids going to do when they graduate? Mm. Is their first thought to pick up and take off and leave and search out those bigger centers? Or what is going to be the things that keep them home? Um, I know that uh, when I decided to move back to British Columbia because I did a short stint in Alberta, uh, I wanted to come back to my smaller town of Cash Creek because I knew what it was about. I felt a sense of safety here, but Mm -hmm, I also have a wonderful bunch of core memories, which included family dances at Christmas time. It included family dances at Valentine's Day. And it's, I think if we want to keep the sustainability of our communities, we're going to have to really start reaching out to the younger generations and giving them these experiences and memories that say, hey, this place is so awesome. I don't want to go anywhere else. I want to build our communities. Maybe that means developing a housing uh, complex. Maybe that means starting businesses. But uh, we definitely need to reach out to that generation that's going to be builders because, um, yeah. you know, we're, we're full of the seniors. <laughs> I love this. I love this. This gets me excited. Let's start uh, planning a dance, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we need it. Yes, it's that we do. We do. We uh, definitely do. <laughs> I know somebody privately hosted a dance uh, last year in Clinton, and it it went very well. Sold out. Like pe- people were just so excited to be out and yeah. hanging out with each other. It brought people from other communities outside of Clinton into Clinton. Yeah. Well, and you know, there's not a lot of places, like you said, it, there's, there's bars here. And if you don't want to go to the bars here, where do you go? Right? So I love that idea of having like community dances where you can show up and, and not have to, to go somewhere. That and you don't we can be. dress up and our sons can wear bow ties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I know my daughter likes to wear dresses and twirls. Oh. Yeah. Great ideas. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us today. Loved your ideas. Chris, thank you so much for uh, sharing and uh, just being open and honest for this panel discussion. And ladies, you know, I always love chatting with you guys, too. So thank you so much for joining us here on The Rural Perspective.